think that anarchists or I think that radicals in general should be involved in two sets of organizations. On the one hand, I think it's important to be involved in organizations of people who are ideologically like-minded. And that's what I mean by when I talk about a cadre organization. I simply mean a group of people who have similar politics and or who are interested in carrying uh, carrying out those politics uh, and 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 in debating and, and revising and developing those politics. That's what a group like Love and Rage, a group like Bring the Ruckus, seeks to do. And I think that's one very important form of organization that anarchists should be involved in. But that, but I think the real actual change, the real actual change of, to, to creating a free society out of a free society, won't come from those kinds of organizations. Instead, it comes from what people sometimes call mass organizations, or sometimes called, I think, better term for it, social movements. Real change comes out of social movements. And I think anarchists, not only do they need to be involved in organizations of like-minded people who develop studying, reading history, reading theory, developing theory, and developing practice and strategy, and testing it out and revising it. We need, where do you test out and revise it? Well, you test out and revise it in these mass organizations, in the social movement. So I think anarchists should be involved in social movements, organizations, as much as they should be involved in these cadre organizations. And I've been involved in a variety of those mass organizations in my life. And I would say that the most effective ones have not been specifically anarchist. I think the specifically anarchist ones, like info shops and anarchist info shop, tend to be insular. They tend to look to each other and I'll put it this way. They, I think I think that anarchist, specifically anarchist organized projects like info shops, tend to be more concerned with maintaining the anarchist identity of that space or that organization than they do in, in challenging the powers that be. And I think that's a flaw. So I, I find it, I have shifted from being in those kind of organizations to being organizations that don't necessarily identify as anarchists, but whose principles are consistent with, with my anarchist philosophy. So I'm involved in a couple of groups recently. One is, one is Cop Watch. And I was involved in Cop Watch in Phoenix from 1998 to 2003, say. And I also it was involved in Cop Watch in Minneapolis as part of ARA for a few years before that. And base, the basic principle of Cop Watch is we, we, we got the idea of Cop Watch from the Black Panthers. And the Black Panthers uh, would simply go out and observe the police when they pulled people over the streets of Oakland. And with the idea not only to make, would that change the cops' behavior, the way they treat the, the person that they've, they've, they've detained, but it would also reveal what the cops' job is to do. And the job, cops' job is not to protect and to serve, it is to maintain the class and the color line. When you expose that, the idea is that other that people will observe you doing that and will be emboldened themselves to challenge the police and, and to challenge the class and color line that they protect. And I think the Panthers were, were pretty successful at doing that for a couple of years. We tried to imitate the Panthers' success and I'd say we weren't very successful. I, mean, I think we, we patrolled in Phoenix for, like I said, for, for five years. And in fact, Phoenix Cop Watch still exists. So we've been, Phoenix Cop Watch has been patrolling the streets of Phoenix for over 10 years now. And, and every time we roll up with a video camera, I, I promise you the police change their behavior. And the person who was going to get cracked on the head doesn't. Or the person who's going to get arrested only gets a ticket. Or the person who was going to get a ticket go, gets to go home. And people have told us as much uh, and, and have been very thankful for us. But what didn't happen that I was hoping would happen is we didn't begin to build a, a, a movement of mass resistance to the police. People looked at it and said, well, that's crazy that they're watching the cops in the middle of the night. Oh, that's kind of cool, too. But they didn't want to do that themselves. They don't want to join us and they, or start their own cop watch. We just assumed people would come to us. But what I think on reflection is we, anarchists, radicals, need to come to, to the people and not expect that they're going to come to us. So the thing I've been involved with since I moved to Flagstaff is this group called the Repeal Coalition. The Repeal Coalition formed in 2008, and our basic goal is to repeal all anti-immigrant legislation in the state of Arizona, because Arizona is a state that is uh, its population is 30% Latino. One out of every 12 persons in the state is is undocumented, and uh, racist nativist politicians use undocumented people specifically and Latinos generally as scapegoats for all the problems in the state. 
and, and we want to fight that. Because what, to me, it reflects is another example of which white workers are acting more like whites, and they say, kick all those, instead of looking at undocumented people as fellow workers and saying, let's organize together, let's join together and fight, they say, I'm better than you, and I want you to pass a bunch of laws that prove that I'm better than you. And therefore, that ties me to the system. So my goal is to, is to break that, that um, to break that evil alliance between between workers and, and native racist nativist politicians and the, and the, and the, and the companies and the power that they serve. So I regard this project as radical. But we have Democrats in the part in that in the repeal coalition. We have liberals. We have hippies. We have folks who who knows what their ideology are, right? And we have you know working class undocumented moms bouncing babies on their on their laps, and then and I'm, you know who on the one minute talk about how important you know Jesus is and and the, and the Catholic Church is to them, and on the other and on the other hand is, is ready to fight at any cost for their right to live, love, and work wherever they please, regardless of borders. And to me, if I was a pure anarchist, I'd say, oh, I can't work with her. She's a Catholic. You know, she believes in the, the church hierarchy or something. And uh, and I think I would be a fool, because that's where the new society is going to come out of. And that, those folks, that contradictory consciousness between loving a, a church that actually oppresses women and oppresses, uh, you know, oppresses people, versus fighting for freedom, I think that contradiction gets worked out in the struggle itself. So I think I, I, I try to find those struggles that seem to me to be, uh, to, to make demands and engage in struggles that capitalism cannot absorb. I don't think the state can absorb uh, a movement in which people can cross borders freely because it destroys the border and therefore destroys the whole essence of, of, of a national sovereignty. And I think that global capital increasingly depends on national sovereignty uh, to police itself, to, to police the working class. Goods and services need to flow across. My T-shirts and TVs, they can go wherever they want. But human beings, no, no, no. Human beings need to stay in Mexico, in the United States, in, in, in uh, Africa, in Spain, etc. And I think if we blow that open, we, blow, we, we create all kinds of radical possibilities. So I think anarchists should look for those kinds of activities and not be so concerned whether they're specifically anarchists or not. But do they have the potential to build a mass movement that makes demands that are consistent with an anarchist politics?